Theoretical Perspectives on Religion, page 174. So we've looked at the different types of religious denominations. We've had some fantastic presentations from you, um, uh, sorry, religious movements. Now we're actually going to apply in the sociological theories to go with what they think about religion. So we're starting with functionalism. Answer these questions for yourself before you read this section. What functions does religion perform to help maintain social stability? Think about that. Many people would say that actually what religion does is undermine social stability. Alternatively, if you think about how we have discussed different religious movements, then there is this unifying factor, okay? And there is this misinterpretation by other people of what religion is about and this willingness to take quotes out of context to fit in with what you want religion to, to be like. Does religion impede or encourage social change? We'll discuss that in class. Is the role of religion in society changing? Think about the difference between the society that we live in in Dubai and think about the society that maybe I have experienced coming from the UK. What about the societies that you lived in in other countries prior to moving to Dubai as well? For functionists, religion is an organ in the organism, a subsystem within the system, an interlocking and necessary institution which plays a role in the creation and maintenance of the value consensus. It acts as a conservative force within society, a break upon social change. The internalization of a traditional religious belief system and the formal hierarchies which represent it ensures that any social change that occurs is slow, part of social, social evolution rather than rapid, with disturbing structural changes which threaten cohesion and stability. Okay, so here is this functionist idea okay, that religion is there to actually slow down changes within society. What it does is it makes people stop and think about what they are doing uh, and think about how will uh, you know a powerful uh, being consider their actions when they're uh, looking at different things to do. Okay, now, previously, obviously, the idea was with religion that it told you how to behave well and if you didn't behave well then there were these threats of punishment in the afterlife and if you did behave well then your rewards were in heaven so your life might be awful but uh, you know the, the rewards were going to be there but functionism is saying well okay if people are feeling like that then they're not going to try and change anything because they'll believe that actually there's a reason behind why these things are happening to them so religion is this sub section of society which helps to hold society together Durkheim for Emil Durkheim the elementary forms of religious life eh, sorry in the elementary forms of religious life the importance of religion lay in its division between the sacred and the profane. Okay, two terms that we've discussed a lot already. Through religion, sacred objects were created in society in such a way that society itself became sacred. In his research into the customs and beliefs of Aboriginal groups, he argues that religion has a role to play in maintaining mechanical solidarity, where law is automatic and final. The law of the gods is absolute. How organic solidarity is maintained in larger societies where rules and values are more flexible is more complex. The construction of the collective conscience or value system which underpins law and order is more problematic. Okay, so in smaller societies, Durkheim says, okay, your customs and beliefs are the things that hold a people to uh, a group of people together okay they provide them with a unity and they know the things that they have to do that are acceptable to be a part of that group okay and they give these sets of laws or rules that people have to follow you know if you break that rule then you are stepping outside of what is acceptable and you will be punished for it. Okay, so let's take, for example, you know, don't kill. 
let's take that as a law if you know that you kill somebody then you know you're going to be punished for it okay but everybody in society knows that's the law and in smaller societies that works now in bigger societies that becomes a bit of a problem okay yeah, now we move on to this organic solidarity okay and you can't have the same mechanisms within a larger society because you have a wider sense of understanding and you have a wider sense of interpretation of what religion means okay but it is still organic so there are these central ideas um, that are essential for everyone and this is our collective conscience everybody within the society knows that it is wrong to murder okay and that puts a value onto everything that you do however if I'm a soldier and I go out to war to kill people is that still considered to be murder okay but the collective conscience will tell us that you are fighting for your country you are fighting to protect your people therefore this stops being murder uh, and this becomes a fight for freedom okay so in the role of a freedom fighter I'm not going to be considered a murderer in fact my acts are going to be considered to be heroic so this is where our value system comes in however it's more problematic in a wider larger society because you will have people who will step outside of those rules who will not accept them for themselves if you take Christianity as an example sacred things include the Bible altar, church, holy water and the cross. The last is a form of execution, yet it has acquired religious significance because Christ was put to death on it. As Durkheim says, any object can be invested with a symbolic meaning. It is the belief system which gives it that importance. But what do sacred objects symbolize? Okay, so what Durkheim is saying is within a society people can take an object and give it a special meaning so if you take for example the cross yes this was actually a form of, of torture and a form of punishment but for Christians it takes on a different meaning because it symbolizes new life resurrection from uh, from death okay as personified in Jesus and uh, you know what happened with him on the cross so a society can make a symbol out of anything. All right, if we move away from sacred things and we think about symbols that we all recognize, you think of the golden arches, okay? Everybody knows that is McDonald's, or, or the vast majority of people know that that is McDonald's, okay? And for some people that symbolizes their favorite food and for other people that symbolizes, uh, uh, you know, trash, if you like, um, okay? but it still has a symbolic meaning for everybody so when you have a sacred object it has to have a reason behind it remember we talked about the symbolism behind uh, ichthus using a fish to represent christianity okay and and we talked about the fact that it would fit really nicely with the fact that those were fishermen and and jesus said that he was sending them out to be fishers of men or with the story of the feeding of the five thousand with feeding everybody with the loaves and the fishes Okay, but in fact there's a far deeper meaning behind it and people can uh, draw their own symbolism uh, into those sacred objects. The value system. According to Durkheim, religion is a disguised way for people to worship society itself. The sacred objects come to stand for the value system, the all-powerful integrating force which has an existence above and beyond the existence of human individuals. The value system is a social fact existing before you were born, continue to exist after your death, more powerful than you, a vital element which keeps society together and is therefore worthy of worship. Okay, now those points about where that uh, sacred object stands in relation to you shows the deep mindset that goes with it. and there's this undermining idea there that you as a person are less important than this 
this thing because this was there before you were there it will be there after you've gone and you may think you're making a huge difference to the world but actually these sacred objects play a far more important role than you do and so there's this subjugation to religion mm -hmm. Durkheim's view of religion has been criticized as being idealistic society has been placed upon the altar and deified are religious believers really just worshipping society? Okay, so Durkheim was saying, uh, you know, that, that religion is this great unifying factor. It stops people from wanting to rebel and change, and it gives them a sense of belonging. Okay, his idea of anime, where people are, are feeling that they don't belong to society and therefore they head towards the concept of suicide is taken away when you have religion because you belong you all know the way to behave you all sing the same songs do the same acts uh, and that helps you to feel a part of something okay now you know the issue comes in here then is that you know has religion then been created by society to make society more stable Rites of passage. Rather than concentrating on the global social significance of religion, other functionalists have examined religious rituals and ceremonies to see their significance for individuals. Acts of collective worship are supposed to reinforce social values, so just by being there you are taking part, consenting to the consensus. Okay? So being a part of it means you are saying, yes, I agree, this is the right way to behave, these are the right things to do. Uh, maybe not everybody sees it in that way and if you look at things like liberation theology then they're definitely not saying I'm going along with what society says is the right thing to do why do drunken groups always turn up at church for midnight mass on Christmas Eve maybe because they're drunk um, christenings, weddings and funerals always fill churches with people who are the family they are nevertheless taking part in a ritual ceremony which serves to integrate them into a community of moral values and beliefs okay now that's very well you know it's all very well to say that but you know my sister is not a religious person yet she still felt she should get both of her children baptized and when I said to her don't you think you're being hypocritical doing this she was like, oh, why are you denying me the chance to, to do this? Aren't you pleased that I'm wanting to, you know, um, give my children the opportunity to, to be a member of the church and be welcomed into the church? And yes, that was great. But after they'd had the christening, she never went back to church again. Her boys have never gone to church since then, apart from going to friends' weddings or christenings or, you know, the things that they're talking about here. And even then, they're feeling uncomfortable in the things that they do. Her, her nephew, who was a, a godfather when I was godmother to her son, came and talked to me about it because he and I are the same age and we went to school together and he was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing here, Glenda. You know, and so although people may go along for these things for the families, they're also feeling awkward about the situation that they're being put in because it's an unfamiliar situation for them to be in. Funerals help to heal the rift in society and fill the gap left by the deceased. Individuals can mourn and grieve in public, communally, and this reassures them that although their loved one has gone, the community remains. Okay, I think this is quite a cynical view, you know, that what they're saying is, oh, well, this person's gone, but there are all these other people around me to, to still look after me and sustain me and to continue through in the way that things have always been done. Um, you know, for me, a funeral is much more the opportunity to say a public goodbye, to acknowledge that, you know, this genuinely has happened because some people find it very difficult to accept this whole idea. Sooner or later, somebody always says life goes on and society goes on with as little disruption as possible. The christening welcomes the new individual to society. The ritual promises they will live life according to the church's social values. The worship of society is evidence in the fuss made of young babies on these occasions. They are the future of society, but they could also be seen as the future of the church. 
and although people are welcoming them into the church that doesn't mean that they're then going to help them to follow those rules and those values that are important um, for them okay and i don't think that a religious person would respond in the same way and see religion as providing those things criticisms However, like any other organ, the church may lose its power and therefore its functions in society. Does the church really still provide the basis for normative behaviour, the values and morals? Talcott Parsons claims that these are enshrined in the Ten Commandments, but how many people can recall them even if they have had a Christian religious socialisation? Okay, so we might think we know the Ten Commandments, but can everybody name them? The fact that most modern industrial societies are multicultural, there are many forms of religion in Britain and the USA for example, means that the moral codes can be in conflict or have secular values taken over. Is it not a modern value to actually covet your neighbour's possessions and wish you could afford them? Success in financial terms could be said to be the main value of modern industrial societies. Okay, so when we looked at religious movements, we looked at the overlaps that there are. If you're in a multicultural society, do you then have lots of different rules on those religions that you are following? Okay, think about what we discussed and the overlaps that we found. Maybe it's not as diverse as, uh, you know, might be considered looking at it without really going into it in depth. Okay, but then this final point about possessions uh, being really important within society means that values have changed. So is religion still providing the backbone and the spine for society that, uh, that functionalists are saying it's providing?